This is Twit. So Elon Musk is at it again. I, I, I just never know what to think about this guy. <laughs> uh, I think on the one hand, he's nuts. He's nuts. But on the other hand, I love SpaceX. I loved my Tesla. And I'm fascinated by Neuralink as a sci-fi writer. You must be too, Corey. I mean, who didn't read, you know, uh, you know, uh, Neuromancer or um, Neil Stevenson's uh, amazing uh, uh, books about the the metaverse? We right. all we all but, can't wait for that human machine those, interface. Again, those books were warnings, not suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good point. Maybe Elon didn't read them the same way we I did. Mean, if there is like if there is any phrase scarier than neural interface beta tester, it's <laughs> neural interface beta tester. For man who claims to have been red pilled, blocks his wife just after she's given birth to his child, and uh, and and also um, periodically like posts things like I'm a utopian socialist, and it's just a coincidence that I'm under investigation by the National <laughs> uh, Labor Board yeah. for union yeah, busting. Just a coincidence. Just a coincidence. No, no big deal. So uh, he gave a hundred million dollars to a company called Neuralink. Uh, they have, I think, 150 million in funding. They're trying to create a human-machine interface. Uh, this week, they had a demonstration of Neuralink 2.0, which is apparently installed in a pig. Uh, and they also demonstrated their concept for this machine. <laughs> Let me just explain what it does before you put your head in there, okay? Uh, <clears throat> It just drills a little hole in your skull. It takes a little piece out of your, just a little, just a little one, a little piece out of your skull. And then uh, it'll be, it'll, they're going to put it back. Don't worry. And then uh, using computer vision algorithms, they guide a needle containing five micron thick bundles of wires. Five microns is like, uh, you know, uh, um, a human hair. Okay. Actually, a quarter of the human hair. And uh, and they the bundle of wires and insulation they 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 guide them into the brain about six millimeters deep into the brain they avoid blood vessels because you wouldn't want to hit one of those so and then and then uh, they're linked to a series of electrodes inside the brain they pick specific locations and depths uh, if the machine's running at full capacity you can insert six threads containing 192 electrodes a minute uh, and then uh, they put your skull back. There's a cellophane-like sheet that pairs to your smartphone using Bluetooth, and uh, you're now you're now linked up. It's a it's a the link is an ASIC, a thin film, and a hermetic uh, substrate that can interface with those thousand electrodes in your brain, and then they can well right now they can only read the brain. Although they demonstrated it on a pig. Look at this. When <laughs> there you go, folks. How, now how much would you pay? Uh, this pig, the AI is predicting the limb's motions based on the Neuralink implant data uh, on the pig. They had three pigs. One had this, one didn't have it, and then there was a third control pig. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 20,000 megapixels of neural data for each of the 1,024 channels. I think, look, uh, we're in the early days of this. Um, in theory, uh, one of their goals would be to allow a tetraplegic to type at 40 words per minute. Uh, eventually, Elon says he hopes the system will use to create what he describes as a, quote, digital, super intelligent cognitive layer that enables humans to merge with artificially intelligent software. What could possibly go wrong? Well, okay, so basically TikTok has taken algorithmic uh, mind control as far as it can go, and this is the next phase. That's this one is, way to look this at this. This is the next step, so, yeah. But mm -hmm. what, one of the things that Elon Musk likes to do is he likes to exploit the delusion about the lone inventor, the person toiling away in his lab, you know, who invents the next big thing all by himself. And, of course, that's never the case and never has been the case. This sort of research that he is announcing has been going on for literally decades and will continue for literally decades by literally thousands of different research organizations to try to figure out how to interact with the mind directly through software, et cetera. And, and so a lot of this is a, it's a, it's a lot of showboating. I mean, he wants to get in on this business, right, with his company Neuralink. 
but he's not doing anything that's significantly more advanced or exotic or different or revolutionary than lots of other organizations. Uh, he's just getting in front of it and presenting himself uh, as the as the Thomas Edison of our age, uh, which in fact he is not. Uh, he is a great business leader and is very successful. And yes, Elon, I'm looking forward to 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 the to to the satellite internet connection. I'm really yes, looking you're forward counting to on Starlink. But, yeah, I'm counting on Starlink. Uh, as but this am is, I. This is a, this, but this is a whole lot of BS. Um, uh, we are not going to be putting our heads in that machine anytime soon. I love it that Corey says, yes, but they were warning you against, <laughs> against yes. this. See, I misread right. it, right. and I guess Elon did too. I thought, that sounds pretty cool. I thought Snow Crash was really cool. Little did I know. Uh, Frankenstein was not a manual. <laughs> uh, for you know. You're muted. You're muted, Corey. <laughs> Unmute. Unmute. There we go. Is that there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, he is a very entertaining fellow, but he's also a charlatan. And so this raises the question, like, if you were interested in some really entertaining neuroscience, could you find someone who was in a, sh a charlatan? And, and I, I, apropos of that, I have a recommendation. There's a guy at UCSD called Brad Wojtek. He's a neuroanatomist. V-O-Y-T-E-K, Brad Voitech. He's a neuroanatomist. He came and taught uh, one of my uh, classes at UCSD a few years ago when I was teaching the Clarion Science Fiction Writing Workshop. And the way that he teaches neuroanatomy is with zombie movies. <laughs> so he's like, here's this movie in which the every time the bell rings at the gas station, the zombie gas attendant comes out and goes, oh, and picks up the <laughs> gas pump. And puts it what? neuroanatomical insult corresponds to this behavior, right? So he, like, because this is what neuroanatomists do is they have to solve these, like, uh, detective stories, right? Where you, you you observe some facts and you have to hypothesize what's going on in the brain. And and he does this with, with you know, videos and lessons. I think he's written a book. So, yes, you know, the book like, is Do Zombies Dream of Undead Sheep? There you go. <laughs> so you know, like if you're into uh, if you're into like entertaining neuroscience, there is a totally non charlatan video version of this. That's awesome. I completely recommend. He is a riveting speaker, and of course, he's got great audio visual aids because it's just like highlight reels of zombie movies. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? We're not going to Mars. We're not. We're not going to Mars. Oh, We're not going to Mars. I wanted to go to I've Mars. I've said this for the last six years. We're not going to Mars. Like they are not going to solve anything. And it turns oh, out, like, as uh, I no, learned from I, Daniel. Could, he could, you know what? If he's, he wants to make. See, the thing that bothers me about really smart people, I, I'm not even going to put efforts on that that I want to. Certain people just are so smart, and then they become so rich. And I think to myself, so you want to make tunnels so you can skip traffic. How about you make tunnels so that we don't have the cesspool of trash in L.A.? How about you just fix the sewer system in L.A. real quick? Can you fix that for me, genius boy? Can you can you hyperloop some trash? Fun. Could you figure you out a way to we're not sending the envelope back? The right? Because like th 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 there is no set like if you multiply the size of even the smallest one person car by the number of people who need to get anywhere in Los Angeles and then divide it by the amount of road we have you can't solve this problem with cars. You can only solve it with public transit. And he's just like, well, maybe the roles of geometry are different when you're a billionaire. And they're not, <laughs> right? And, and the same and way, like, and this I, idea that... <laughs> I, again, you know, the idea I, I just get really mad when really smart, rich people come with these ideas. As you just eloquently stated, and so did Mike, there's other people doing a better job of this. And you're taking up media time and money and marketing and branding. And you made this stupid machine that nobody's going to stick their head in. And you messed up a good pig. That pig had either had a happy life or could have been on my plate and been some bacon. You don't want messed up this pig. Now nobody's going to get this pig. And you're going to have many other pigs like this you're doing it to. Peter called his man. Imagine the down. trauma the pig's going through, right? Right? And when, yeah. when it comes to getting Peter. to Mars, you know, like the like the amount of hydrocarbons we would need, like the the CO two budget for lifting an appreciable fraction of the human race off of Earth would render the planet Earth permanently uninhabitable by everyone who remains, right? So, like, his, if the, you know, I'm all for, like, let's put some scientists on Mars. First, let's put a bunch of robots on Mars because that's better than scientists. But eventually, maybe we'll put some scientists on Mars. But the idea that space colonization is the answer to climate crisis... Just fix like, the planet we're on! It's, you know, you cannot, like, it's just, it's just math.